Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grail's virtual open house. My name is Janice Leong from the talent acquisition team, and we are so thrilled to welcome all of you here, including many of our local community leaders and partners in the RTP region. The opening of our RTP facility marks a huge milestone for Grail as we move forward in making our multi-cancer early detection blood test available to patients and healthcare providers. Today, we will have a Q&A session at the end. And if you have questions, please submit your questions through the Q&A function and our speakers will do our best to answer your questions. Grail's mission is to detect cancer early when it can be cured. And every day at Grail, we are making this a reality for our patients. Our agenda today includes an introduction from NC Biotech President and CEO, Doug Edgerton, followed by opening remarks by Chair Brenda Howerton, Durham Board of County Commissioners. We will then have our site head and VP of Operations, Andrew Crenshaw, showcase our RTP facility, followed by our guest speaker and medical key opinion leader, Dr. Andrew Poklopovic of Virginia Commonwealth University Macy Center of um, Cancer Center, share more about GRAIL's technology and its impact to patients. We will then have talent acquisition touch upon career opportunities, and we will be concluding with Q&A. And it is my pleasure to introduce Doug Edgton, President and CEO of NC Biotech. NC Biotech is the leader in life science economic development for North Carolina. And we want to thank NC Biotech for their support and partnership so far. Without further ado, please welcome Doug Edgton. Thank you, Janice. It's a wonderful to be here today. I wish you could be here in person. Um, it, as your virtual host this, this morning, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to uh, share with you what we are so excited to have is Grail coming to the community, building a facility, and, and getting started with the work that you all do to change lives around the world. So we, we know early detection is super important, and we are, uh, as a team, very excited. So on behalf of my partners and colleagues here at the Biotech Center and for the folks here of North Carolina, we are thrilled that you're here. Let me tell you a little bit about the Biotech Center. Um, we, uh, we've been around since 1984, and our job really has been to help uh, create the ecosystem uh, that is, makes it success for easy for companies to succeed in North Carolina in the life science space. Our, our team spends a lot of time doing things from, from starting with universities to help spin research out, to start early stage companies, to recruiting companies of all sizes into the state. And uh, we target those areas that we think are uh, most likely to uh, help bring things out of our universities. And so uh, the Biotech Center has been doing this. As a, it, it's been a, bi, a bipartisan effort started by the state. We're the first organization of its type in the world to focus on a single area of uh, economic development and has been continuously supported by our General Assembly uh, since 1984. Our team is varied. We have a fair number of people on here. And I think you, if you've met any of our players, uh, you will know that they are dedicated. They love the work that they get to do. Working with companies like Grail is very exciting for all of us. And so that's uh, one of the things that I think the Biotech Center will, will help you all along the way. We, we do everything that we can to make sure that your entry into the market and your long-term success uh, all happen here in North Carolina. So I would say that, uh, you know, in addition to the, the things the Biotech Center brings, the state of North Carolina brings an awful lot to the table with three comprehensive cancer centers in the state. Uh, I, there's only, I think, 58 comprehensive cancer centers in the country. So that number may have changed since I last was uh, working with them. Uh, nearly $200 million in NIH funding has uh, come in for cancer research into the uh, state since 2019. And uh, there's a strong alignment with the Precision Health Initiatives and the Collaborative Mission to accelerate uh, 
initiatives that foster research and enable providers to engage industry and empower the citizens to improve the health uh, around the state of North Carolina and around the country. I'll stop there and just again issue my uh, excitement that you're here and turn this over to uh, let me introduce you to Brenda Howerton. She's the chair of the Durham Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. Greetings. On behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, I am delighted to join you today for this very special occasion in the life of our community. We are honored to celebrate this site unveiling with Grail and other community leaders. I can certainly say that our entire Durham County community welcomes the innovative work that Grail has undertaken in early cancer detection and pioneering a test that identifies more than 50 cancers with just a single uh, blood straw, draw. I will say without hesitation that nearly everyone listening today has had their life or that of a close family member impacted by cancer. We know that cancer is a devastating disease that leaves an enormous toll in its wake. However, the good news is that by detecting cancer early, before it has spread throughout the body, the odds of preventing successful treatment and saving lives significantly increase. And that's very good news. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in America and claims nearly 1,700 American lives every day. It is estimated that more than 20,000 North Carolinians will die of cancer in 2021. Compared to other states, North Carolina faces a higher incidence of lung, prostate, and other deadly cancers. The significance of this work cannot be understated. We are extremely fortunate to have Grail pursuing solutions that will impact our quality of life. The jobs that Grail will bring to Durham cover a range of education and experience backgrounds. Every level position at this company starts with, a, with an associate's or bachelor's degree and exceeds our county's average wage. We are so pleased that Grail is partnering with North Carolina Central University, Durham Tech, and NC Biotech to recruit local residents into these quality jobs and career opportunities. We expect great results from this relationship. The investment that Grail is making in our Durham community will be felt in many, many ways. In addition to the importance of the work and the value, jobs, Grail is making a sizable capital investment and that will benefit our tax base and allow us to provide more county services. Let me conclude by saying, Grail understands the importance of working with our workforce development partners from Durham Public Schools on up as well as your colleagues. I would like to introduce the next speaker and Vice VP of Operations and Site Lead. Andrew, come on up. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Chairman Howerton. I appreciate the kind remarks, and I, I do have the, the distinct pleasure of uh, being the site lead of uh, the Grail RTP facility. Uh, this RTP facility is a, a, a giant step forward for uh, Grail to be able to start delivering 
uh, on our, our expectations and our mission statement to detect cancer early uh, when it can be treated. Uh, we are launching our gallery test uh, in this quarter. Uh, so we will be launching it in our, our California site, but uh, as soon as we can get the, the Durham or RTP facility up and running, uh, we're gonna start transitioning all of our commercial activities over to this laboratory. And to do this, uh, we, we looked at it and we wanted to be able to do multiple things. It's one, find an area that can grow with Grail. Um, we were attracted by the innovation, innovative spirit uh, of North Carolina, as well as the, the workforce capabilities uh, coming out of the local universities, the community colleges, and even the military uh, that are local to North Carolina. Uh, I'm a little biased that we picked the, the right place because I am a North Carolinian, uh, born and raised in, uh, outside of Charlotte, went to NC State. So I'm extremely proud to be a part of uh, what Grail is gonna be bringing to this community. Um, so uh, a little bit more about what we're looking to do in uh, the, the facility here is it is gonna be our commercial um, uh, hub for the entire uh, operations of Grail. Um, our gallery test is going to be an early detection uh, capability of over 50 different cancers. Um, but we, we build out a, a pretty big uh, square footage facility. Um, and what you'll see is we're going to show you a video of some of those uh, areas within there. And uh, what you'll see is we, we built not only for what we need today, but for tomorrow. Um, we currently have about 40 uh, headcount already on site in our RTP facility. We expect to be close to 100 by the end of this year. Um, and as you can see on the screen, we're looking uh, within the next couple of years to be over 400 to be able to meet the demand that we expect. Um, you heard uh, folks say that you know, you know this is going to touch everybody, uh, North Carolinians, as well as anybody in the United States and globally. Uh, this is the, the first um, on the market type of early detection. Uh, and then if you think about there's over different hundred different types of cancer and we're able to detect up to 50 of them. Um, and so uh, if you put that in perspective, there's only five uh, current um, early screening techniques right now on the market. And so uh, by doing a single blood draw, we're able to um, uh, utilize the cutting edge technology to be able to uh, bring this to our, our patients. Uh, we are located off of uh, Highway 54. Uh, we're, we're on a, the Park Point office in Life Science Park. So not only will you see you know, cutting edge laboratory that I'll show you, but um, we're blending in you know, uh, amenities for our employees too, because at Grail, we feel that not only do we have a strong mission statement that we wanna be able to provide, but we wanna provide a, uh, an engaged atmosphere for our employees as well, so that uh, they can grow with us, uh, they can expand their capabilities. Um, and as you heard, we're gonna be looking for multidiscipline type folks. Uh, it's not just gonna be in the, the clinical lab scientists, uh, it's gonna be an automation engineer to be able to do the volume that we're looking at over these years, it's gonna be a lot of automation, a lot of software development, um, uh, even into our warehouse and facility for folks that are all gonna be working with a common uh, goal in mind to deliver that mission of uh, Grail. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna uh, flip it to the next slide and uh, show you a little bit about our facility.
So obviously we would love to have you actually out at the site today on, on our grand opening of uh, the RTP facility, but um, hopefully you got a glimpse into what we are or we're building here and uh, what we're looking to do in the future. Um, but beyond that, uh, I had the great pleasure of introducing our ne next speaker. Uh, Dr. Andrew Pakaplovic is a medical hematologist and oncologist at the VCU Massey Center uh, Cancer Center's Development Therapeutics Research Program. Um, prior to completing his residency and fellowship at VCU Medical Center, um, he received his undergraduate degree from Emory University and earned his medical degree at the University of South Florida College of Medicine. Uh, currently, Dr. Pok Popovich is leading clinical trials, testing new therapies for various types of cancer. So we're excited for him to be able to talk a little bit about what gallery means uh, and uh, the early uh, detection technology that we're trying to put onto the market. All right, thank you, Andrew. All right, so uh, I'll be talking today about the impact uh, of the gallery test on screening for cancer, detecting cancer early, and ultimately the goal of everything that we do in the treatment of cancer, which is to save more lives. Um, as you know, cancer affects many Americans and many people over the, and around the world. Um, the incidence for a female in her lifetime is one in two, and for a male, it's one in three. And so every family ends up being affected at some point in time with cancer. You know, and the questions that, that weigh on us, you know, will I or a family member be diagnosed with cancer? When will it happen? Where is it in my body? Can it be cured? Or is this the thing that's gonna take my life? Next slide. So the US Preventive Services Task Force does have guideline recommended screening for some cancers. We have breast cancer screening with mammograms. We have colon and rectal cancer screening with colonoscopies and fecal occult blood tests. We have lung cancer screening with low dose CTs and heavy smokers. We have cervical cancer screening. Um, but what we have is nearly seven out of 10 cancers without a screening recommendation, which means that most cancers, we don't have a way to test for them early, um, at least haven't had, and we are now beginning to embark on a new era where we will be able to screen uh, cancers that previously didn't have uh, a screening uh, capability. Next slide. So thinking about the cancers that are not found by the standard of care today, out of about 422,000 cancers total, about 100,000 of them have a preventive services task force category A or B recommendation, breast, colon, cervical cancer, and lung. And then there are 327,000 cancers with no recommended screening, including those that have really poor long-term outcomes, primarily because they're diagnosed late. Things like ovarian cancer and pancreatic cancer uh, and some of the hardest cancers to treat uh, end up having no real effective modality for screening to catch it early. The cell-free DNA-based um, multi-cancer uh, detection assay can detect over 50 cancers. Next slide, please. So early detection is critical for improving the odds of survival. If you look on the right, there's a low five-year cancer-specific mortality when cancers are diagnosed early, an 11% mortality rate over five years. However, when cancers are diagnosed late with distant metastatic disease, the five-year cancer-specific mortality is 79%, much larger proportion of cancer deaths are uh, in patients that are diagnosed late and 71% of cancer related deaths today are in cancers that have no recommended screening. Next slide. So the need for better screening now, this is a uh, sort of what happened about a year ago when COVID uh, led to shelter in place and reduction in outpatient procedures and non-essential medical tests. You see that there were major reductions in mammograms and pap smears, colonoscopies, CT scans, and PSAs, um, which will likely lead to later presentation for patients over the next several years. Um, I've seen that with a few cases myself over the last six months. Um, 
but even with these types of reductions, they are re returning back towards their baselines. But really for the vast majority of cancers, we're like that all the time. We don't have a way to screen for pancreatic cancer. We don't have a way to screen for ovarian cancer. So this is really what all other cancers have been facing for years to come. Next slide, please. So I'll be talking about the convergence of genomics and artificial intelligence with machine learning to enable a new paradigm for early cancer detection. Next slide. The gallery test is expected to increase the total cancer detection threefold when added to recommended single cancer screenings. There are approximately 1.3 million cancers in the US detected between patients aged 50 to 79. Stool-based screening for colon cancer will detect about 65,000 cancers. Sensitivity of 92%, the specificity is low, uh, so the positive predictive value remains low with about 3.7%. Mammography, a well-accepted screening tool, will detect about 116,000 cancers with a sensitivity of 87%. Um, lower specificity, so a positive predictive value of 4.4%. Combining all the single cancer screenings, uh, about 200,000 cancers will be detected. With the gallery test, there is a 12 pre-specified cancers, um, some of the most dangerous and lethal cancers. That can detect an additional 331,000 cancers with a sensitivity of 73% very high specificity, leading to a positive predictive value of 36%. And then the gallery all cancer, the greater than 50 cancer assay, uh, has a sensitivity of 47%, extremely high uh, specificity with a positive predictive value of 43%. And when you add together all screening modalities that exist, you're now up to 624,000 out of the 1.3 uh, million annual cancers incident in the United States, a major increase over where we are today. Next slide. So some of the key features, um, there are greater than 50 uh, cancer types that can be detected, including hematologic malignancies, sarcomas, uh, GU cancers, um, rare cancers like pleural mesothelioma, lymphomas, gallbladder, pancreatic cancer, a positive predictive value of 44%, which is about a log higher than what you get from uh, mammography for breast cancer, a false positive rate that's very, very low, 0.5%. And it's able to pick up early stage cancer when treatment options are, are more broad uh, for curative intent, 41% sensitivity for all cancers, stages one to three, and 68% sensitivity for uh, the 12 pre-specified high-risk cancers that actually represent about two-thirds of cancer mortality in the United States. In addition, um, due to the nature of the assay with the uh, methylation analysis, they can actually predict the cancer signal of origin, meaning we believe that this test says you might have cancer and that you'd have cancer of the head and neck region. And it can do that correctly 89% of the time to really help guide the clinician towards where to go evaluate the patient for cancer. Next slide, please. So the potential for early detection. What we're looking for with this test is to identify more cancers at earlier stages with higher curative intent treatments. Um, so if you look in the middle figure, what you'll see is that clinically, the stage distribution between stage one, two, three, and four across the x-axis, you'll see that many patients are diagnosed clinically in late stage by the time they are sick and have symptomatic cancer or have a large mass or lump that is new. With cell-free DNA, you can shift that curve where you're detecting fewer late stage cancers and really increasing your early cancer detection rates. So if you look at on the left figure, the proportion of cancers intercepted based upon the detection method, only a third of cancers would be detected clinically uh, as they relate to deaths, uh, where two thirds would be able to be detected by cell-free DNA. 
as it relates to the death rate. And by having the stage shift to earlier stage, more treatable cancers, you can actually potentially avert up to 39% of cancer associated deaths. And when you think about what type of clinical impact that would have, um, over the last 30 years, we have had approximately a 33% decline in the cancer death rate since 1991. And here we're talking about with early detection, really being able to move the needle and possibly increase uh, the proportion surviving and reducing the death rate, another major milestone forward. Next slide, please. So in summary, by adding GRAIL's multi-cancer early detection test to current screening, you can detect tenfold more cancers uh, types, twice as many cancers detected, and 12 times fewer false alarms due to the specificity of this particular assay. Um, and this can really mark the first great step forward in our screening role for identifying all of the other types of cancers that had previously not been able to be screened for. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Poklopovic, for providing your insights. Um, next, we're going to have our talent acquisition team talk about um, some of our career opportunities. So we are hiring with our new site, we are scaling, and we are um, building our, out our new site and seeking motivated individuals who are passionate to advance our mission to save lives. We have many career opportunities across the clinical laboratory, research and development, automation, process engineering, equipment engineering, manufacturing science and technology, supply chain, and new grad opportunities uh, for those who are graduating uh, this year. And I would like to introduce our RTP talent leader, Jennifer Mentalo. Thanks, Janice. What an amazing world we live in that we can host an open house now virtually, right? You know, in fact, over this past year, our talent team has been busy hiring virtually too. I admit though, I actually am looking forward to the day when we're all together, finally live in this beautiful new building that you all just saw. I am absolutely honored to be part of this local talent team, adding amazing professionals to this brand new RTP site. And Janice is right, there is not a more exciting time to join Grail. We're literally building from the ground up. You know, when you join Grail, as you've heard from Dr. Povic, as well as Andrew, you know you're joining something bigger than you, something groundbreaking, something that really hasn't been done before, and you can be part of it. You have the opportunity now to potentially join a company whose mission is to detect cancer early when it can be cured. We all want that. You know, in, in our lives, most of us have been affected by cancer in some way. And now it's your chance to consider being part of a team who truly wants to do something about it. By working at Hair Grail, you are helping to make a difference. We have filled many roles this year and have many, many more to go. So watch us, connect with us, and together we can explore a role that might be right for you now or in the future. Check out our website at grail.com slash careers or email us personally at rtpcareers at grailbio.com. Grab a pen and paper. I may have said that fast, so I'll repeat it one more time. Check out our website at grail.com slash careers or email us personally at rtpcareers at grailbio.com. I look forward to possibly connecting with you at one point or another in the near future, but thank you so much for letting me be part of this team. Finally, it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Molly Rhodes, who will lead us through our Q&A. Thank you, Jennifer. We do have a few questions that have been coming in through the chat as well as the Q&A box. If you do have a question you'd like to submit, please do submit it through the Q&A. Um, we'll try to go ahead and address uh, as many of those as we can during this time. Um, we do have one question around um, uh, if this recording will be available to share 
uh, with possible candidates afterwards? And the answer is yes. Um, everyone who is uh, a registered attendee at this event should be receiving a recording of this uh, entire presentation within the next couple of business days. Um, we do have another question around um, the, what areas in which the organization is engaging with the local community. So I'd like to kick that question over to uh, Janice Leung or um, anyone else who would like to, to respond to that question. Thanks, Molly. So um, this year we are um, definitely getting engaged with community partners and um, meeting um, leaders and partners in the community through business networking groups and diversity groups and um, also with universities. Uh, we do have a plan this year to um, further engage um, with recent grads and career, um, sorry, and universities um, later in the fall as well. And um, I'll also kick it to Andrew Crenshaw who could elaborate more on that. Sure, thank you, Janice. Um, and so as we build out the team here, um, we're trying to be a part of the community. We don't feel like uh, Grail should just come into a community and, and kind of cherry pick the talent and uh, uh, do what we need. We wanna give back. And so uh, as we develop our, our, our culture here on the site, we're really looking for engagement, not only um, all the way through in, especially for STEM uh, type, uh, you know, qualities that we're looking in uh, to folks that anywhere from all the way from kindergarten all the way up to colleges. And so um, not only we have a very good uh, employee engagement program, so we will be looking for the, the actual grailers the, to give feedback on where we should be uh, uh, providing impact to the community. But uh, we did see this as a, a, a selection of a community that not only can uh, help support Grail's mission, but we can give back to that community. So stay tuned. Uh, we, we do plan on being a, a strong partner in this community and uh, being engaged in all aspects of the community. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we do have another question from Kevin. Um, this might be most appropriate for Dr. Pokopovic uh, around how often the Grail tests would be or perhaps should be performed. Is this typically at annual checkup or other, um, what might be the typical standard of care with gallery? So yeah, I've been thinking about this and I think that over time, the, the, the optimal timing of when this test should be performed will come into greater focus. Um, I first envisioned uh, blood-based cancer screening to be something that occurs at the annual history and physical with a patient's primary care doctor. Um, as sort of, that's kind of the thing that I see as the future of, of these types of non-invasive testing. You're gonna go, you're gonna get your cholesterol checked, you're gonna get your cancer screen, um, all the other healthcare maintenance things that you do. And if something triggers a signal, then that moves along. Could it be that we learn about alterations and sensitivity by different frequencies? Yes, I think that there may be refinement to that timeline, but uh, I envision this as being, at least to start, the, the thing that you do at the annual h &P. Thank you, doctor, for that response. We do have some other questions that are rolling in. Um, we will try to address as many of them as we can. Um, we did have one question around when we expect the site to be up and running or operational. So I'll kick that over to Andrew Crenshaw. Sure, we, uh, we're lucky we, we got our certificate of occupancy just recently. And so we're, we're uh, really focusing on getting the lab up to our regulatory uh, requirements around CAP and CLIA. Uh, but we are anticipating being able to start running clinical samples uh, in Q4 this year. Um, you know, all things being uh, bringing on a new facility, we, we need to make sure that one, we take uh, uh, great pains to ensure that we get the, the appropriate quality uh, measures in place. Um, but we are working hard and we, we do expect to, to be able to, to launch uh, our North Carolina facility in Q4 of this year. Thank you. And we have another question, I think, for Jennifer and Janice. Can you share more around the different uh, levels of positions that you expect to hire 
for within each of those areas uh, delineated earlier, um, entry level, mid senior, uh, so forth. Yes, yeah, so we are hiring um, across entry level positions, including recent grads, as well as management positions in the lab and even across the um, lab and automation and um, manufacturing science and technology. We will also have um, those who have a few years of experience. So all across years of experience, I would say. Thank you. All right, lots of questions coming in. Thank you guys. Let's see, we've talked about the local community and some of the roles. Um, there was a question around uh, a need for uh, software development talent and if we would be open to uh, consultants or, or contractors in those areas. Yes. So for those who are interested in um, those software engineering positions, um, feel free to contact us and we do have those opportunities. Thank you. We have a question from Theo. Um, this might be for Andrew. How much or what kind of R&D will be performed in RTP versus at the other GRAIL locations? Sure. Um, so we do have an a R&D component here on site, um, and a lot of that is going to be working on our next version of uh, Gallery. So uh, as we're already looking to launch in Q2 this year, uh, our, our Gallery test, we're already looking about how can we make this test more automated, more faster, uh, uh, and, and expand the, the uh, capabilities of this assay. So there's a um, on-site uh, dedicated R&D group that is working with in conjunction with our, our California groups uh, around that. But um, our California site will be our main hub of R&D uh, and development, but we will have components here on-site uh, in North Carolina as well. Excellent, thank you. And we did have one other question for talent acquisition around um, our, our current postings for the positions. Will there be more openings coming soon um, based versus what's on there on the career site currently? Yeah, that's a so good question. Oh. Yeah, sorry, Janice. I, I love the questions about talent. Thank you so much. I love the interest that everyone is showing. Yes, what you're seeing right now is just a glimpse of what we have open right now in Q2. Watch for Q3 and Q4. and all the roles that are gonna be opening very soon. Thank you. And we had another question from Jamie Garza around, uh, will we allow people to apply for uh, California jobs, but work out of North Carolina? I will say most of our positions in North Carolina are on site in North Carolina for now, um, but we may have one or two that, you know, we, we might not know that uh, potentially, but I would say for the most part, primarily all our positions in North Carolina are on site. Great. And, and are we looking to open any QA positions soon? I believe that's forecasted for later this year. As you can imagine, a site this big, you know, a QA is a big part of the, the development of this site. So um, as we grow our operations here, those type of uh, support functions like QA, um, warehouse, other areas will, will definitely be coming along as well. Thank you. All right, I think we have time for maybe just a couple more questions. Um, let me see here. Let's see. Wow, these are coming in fast. Thank you, everyone. We'll try. We won't have time to get to all the questions today. Um, we would definitely encourage you to email rtpcareers at grailbio.com if we don't get to your questions today. Um, let's see. A lot of program manager jobs require a science degree. Do you see any changes to that? 
I'll jump into that. Um, I mean, as we we grow, uh, a lot of our, our program and project management, it will be around as we scale in operation excellence and other activities. And so uh, while not a, a, a 100% um, uh, a requirement for some of our jobs, but uh, if we are working in the laboratory or uh, assigned to uh, a support function for the laboratory, it tends to be a requirement in regulations to have that science degree. Um, but as we bring on more program and project management for the site for larger initiatives and um, activities like that, there will be capabilities of folks uh, coming from more diverse backgrounds. Thank you. I think we'll be able to take one more question. Um, what is GRAIL's commitment to diversity? Janice or Jen, do you want to address that one? Yeah, I can address this one. So um, that is one of our um, pillars for hiring this year is making sure that diversity is part of our goal. We wanna make sure that we have an inclusive, diverse workforce. And that, that just doesn't mean just, you know, um, diversity um, in companies. It means that everyone's perspective and, and experience matters. And so we want to make sure that we're having an inclusive um, environment and workforce. And so we are targeting and partnering with local organizations and making sure that we are working with uh, local universities to make sure that um, we do have a diverse workforce. And so that is a main goal of ours this year. Thank oh, and you. one more thing is we also are partnering with um, local DEI affiliations and also in the uh, triangle. And so that also includes um, connecting with We Connect and um, other DEI alliances in the community. Thank you, Janice. And I think um, we'll take one last question. And this is around um, relocation accommodations. Um, there was a question around if uh, relocation is um, is being offered. I can certainly take that question and, and Janice and Andrew jump in if you have more to add, but absolutely, depending on the level, depending on the ro role and depending on the talent that we're seeking, we're certainly open to offering relocation when um, it is necessary and um, depending on the talent that we are in need of. Janice or Andrew, would you like to add to that at all? Yes, so we are open to relocation for uh, some of our roles. Um, and so that is, um, we are taking applications for our positions. Um, you know, whether you are out of the state or out of the county, we um, are talking to candidates wherever. Great, thank you. As I mentioned, if we were unable to get to your questions today, uh, please do feel free to email us directly and we'll do our best to respond. Janice, back to you. All right, well, thank you so much, Molly. And thank you all for attending our virtual open house today. And to all our guest speakers, a very big thank you to Doug Edgton, Chair Brenda Howerton, Dr. Polapovic, and thank you so much NC Biotech for hosting our event today. We will be sending out the recording of today's event as well as our career website and contact information. Um, and so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, but we look forward to seeing all of you in the community soon and have a great day.